right now what we're looking at, I want to just break something down for you pretty quickly pretty quickly. So I'm pulling up five different metrics and the five metrics I'm pulling up are the RSI, which is the relative strength index, the MFI, which is the uh, money flow index, the MACD, which is a momentum uh, oscillator, the ADX, which is a momentum oscillator, and the ultimate oscillator, UO. They, they are critical in measuring momentum. And there are a couple people out there who have written very profound books about this subject, and we've studied it ex extensively. Um, but ultimately, what the academic literature taught, and really good analysis by a gentleman by the name of J.D. Henning, his father had written about momentum, his name was Grant Henning, and they did a significant amount of analysis over periods of time, along with a number of other momentum-based uh, names. But they found they went through a, a large number of components. They went through fundamentals. They went through technical components. They went through different an anomalies to really kind of get a better understanding of what could identify breakout stocks and what could not. What it kind of came back down around to were that there were five indicators and five indicators only that had really proven uh, to work in identifying strong momentum conditions, potential breakout conditions and how they all work together. And it's going to be a little bit of eyeballing when you look at this, but I do want to kind of give you a general sense of understanding the current conditions for this market and what we've seen going back to uh, the beginning of this year. So if we start with December, your RSI is going to be one of the most important components of your analysis of momentum. Remember, relative strength index is a measurement of price movement. It has range, typically ranges between zero and 100, obviously, but the typical focus is between 30 and 70. And on the 30 side, when you fall under 30, that means you are oversold. And when you are over 70, that is where you are overbought. And as you can see, looking back on this kind of daily analysis of the SPY, you can see that when we had that huge sell-off, all right, let's just talk briefly about the beginning of the year. The beginning of the year, we were in positive momentum conditions, and then around the 13th, uh, the SPY fell under its 50-day moving average, but we saw a sharp move down in this market, and that coincided with the RSI of the SPY falling under 50. But that doesn't tell the full story. If we look at some of these other measurements, some of these other indicators, you see that the money flow index, that's another oscillator, that's another measurement of volume and price momentum. And here you, you are ranging between 20 and 80. So 20 is oversold conditions and 80 is overbought conditions. Well, here you see in, in late January, in late January, the markets had a very strong sell-off. That is what coincided with the strongest amount of insider buying that we had going all the way back to March of 2020. There was a lot of insider buying and there were a lot of funds that were snapping up the stock. Um, now, we had this negative move here, back here on the 13th, and as you can see, the ADX crossed, uh, the red line crossing over the green line, and also some choppiness in the ULT. The ULT will not come into focus for a little while, but the MACD, which is another momentum oscillator, you can see what lines up here in, in early January, if we scale back, what we can see is multiple, multiple pieces working together to kind of give us a clue of the broad market. And here you have RSI dropping under 50, you have MFI dropping under 50. You had a negative move on the ADX just a couple of days earlier. You had a negative move on the MACD a couple of days earlier. And as these all start to align, there is correlation between their activity. At that point, you can start to eyeball specifically that a momentum situation is transpiring in this market. Now, that's not going to give you an exact measurement. The exact measurement is really based on stocks that are moving through the multiple cycles of their price movement. Now, remember, stocks don't just go up and down. They don't just go horizontally down to the right. They move in waves. And as you can see in this situation, the SPY has been engaging in lower highs and lower lows throughout the year. That creates what is known effectively as a channel. And in this situation, you can go back to December and you can see that the market has been operating in this negative channel environment all the way until effectively two weeks ago. 
So here in this environment, as you can see, you're going to have some breakout from the lower highs and the lower lows. And that's what we were looking for back in March. Back in March, if you pay very close attention, you'll see you had overbought, oversold conditions here, but the conditions started to break down again in March. You had oversold conditions on the RSI. Here is a momentum switch around March 16th. That's when the Federal Reserve spoke, and the Federal Reserve leader, Jerome Powell, came out and said, we are not having a recession. The markets ripped, and they were coming off of a relatively low oversold conditions. Here, RSI on the SPY moves higher. The MFI moves higher above the, above the midline. You see this gap close between the red and the green here on the ADX. And the ULT starts to move higher. Here is another MACD move. In this time, the black line over, over the red line, uh, the 12th 26 figure, that becomes a little momentum oscillator. Now, you'll hear a little momentum move. What you'll hear out of some people is that they like to trade one of these things, and they should trade one of the, these things, but just one of them doesn't tell you the full story. And when you start to see positive movement here, positive movement here, positive movement here, positive movement here, and positive movement here, even if it's off a couple of days, it gives you a strong indication that the markets potentially can break out. Now, you are eyeballing this a little bit. I know that that can be a little bit tricky, but when you break it down into the full universe of stocks in the S&P 500, you can look and see at all of these stocks, what is moving above 50 on the RSI. What is moving above 50 on the MFI and identify different breakout conditions that you eventually move to just whether or not you have stocks that are accelerating up in price at the same time or decelerating. And I mean dropping. So right before Google was about to report earnings, it had a big drop and the stock had effectively fallen 7%. So when a stock like Google, here's the earnings number, stock effectively falling 7%, that is a lot of capital leaving the market all at once. That is a lot of selling, and it takes a lot of selling for a stock of Google's size to fall by 7% in a day. Lack of buyers may potentially be an issue, but as you can see, this stock actually did find some positive momentum immediately after earnings. Here's your MACD lines. Obviously, just looking at this right now, you can see a stock that moved into breakout conditions right around its earnings. So here's the MFI moving above its 50, the MFI following up after it, MACD positive, ADX moving positively, and the ultimate oscillator moving positively. So I was asked to break all of this down. I was ex asked to explain this uh, by some people and just kind of give you a better sense that we are looking for conditions to improve across the board on all of these momentum indicators to identify positive breakout stocks. Now, we're building a new forecasting uh, system on this right now that will allow us to identify st stocks effectively moving from 40 to 50, 50 to 80, and then move forward to really identify the short-term moves. But at the end of the day, what we're really focusing on, which I think is key, is those positive and negative switches in this market down to the day. And then we go back and we look at the SPY from the beginning of the year. We have had these down days that, that where the markets, there was a huge flush out of capital. And that was around the 13th of January. The positive switch, which happened around the 28th. The negative switch, which happened around February 12th. The positive switch back around the 16th when the Fed spoke. April 5th and 6th when we first started shorting charge point. Huge move down on the SPY all the way down to 378. We had a turnaround around the 24th of March. Then we had June 8th. That was the week that the hedge funds sold more stocks than they had since uh, 2007, 2008. And then we had a positive switch recently. Now, what happened with the positive switch? Well, there were a couple of things that we had to monitor here. One, a clear view on this market improving, starting to improve came in June, came right around this, this low point on the 17th of June. But you see the MACD cross here around the 24th, I believe, 27th. But the positive momentum, I mean, I mean, the real breakout that we've seen over the last two weeks, that comes right around the 18th, 19th. You see the RSI of the SPY move above 50. 
You see the MFI, which had been hovering around 50 breakout. You see this continued strong momentum in the MACD, and you see the ADX breaking down. Not really too, too focused around that, but you're seeing, again, four out of five of your indicators are all improving, and that can signal positive movement forward. So what we're looking for right now in the MACD here is a potential turnaround here because this blue line that we're looking at here, which I believe what we're looking at here, and I'm going to, I'm going to show you the uh, settings real quick so that you know, the MHCD line is the, uh, is the blue line and the signal line is the orange line. What we're looking at here out of these 12 and 26 uh, EMA uh, figures, we're looking for this to reverse much like it did back in March. And that can be an early signal of a potential move. So we've had multiple moves this year on the MACD, obviously pay very close attention to that. And what we're looking for here, this breakdown, we're looking for an exact date that we can start to short this market. You can see here, very, very clear. This is this is really the first time we've gone under the hood all, on, on all of this stuff. But you can see this breakout here. We're looking for this to reverse. And the second that this MACD reverses, that can be an early signal. We'll pay very close attention to the RSI. This can break down very quickly as it has previously. So we're watching all five of these. This will be our clues for the SPY. If you want to talk about the broader market itself, you can do the same thing with the IWM. That's the Russell 2000. That gives us a broad, broader view of the full market, but it doesn't take us all the way down to, say, the IWC, which is the um, uh, microcap ETF. Obviously, we are in overbought territory on microcap stocks. We've seen a significant amount of momentum across the board. If we go to groups and we can look at the smaller capitalization stocks, you're seeing the nano cap stocks up more than 2% this week, uh, today, 7.7% up over the last week. And small and mid caps have been the primary drivers of the performance in this broader market, 8.8 on the small, 8.7 on the mid. And moving forward, these stocks will likely break down first. And then after that, the S&P 500 is typically the last man standing. Once the S&P 500 starts to get into negative momentum conditions, that's where you see ample levels of institutional selling, and that can be quite, quite brutal as we have seen in the past.